Is anyone out there? Well, if you are, it's time to make a purchase because the holidays are upon us and everyone knows that our collections make the best, unique gift at great pricing. For you horror fans, check out the all-new Horror 500 Gigabyte Collection and also the new 2 terabyte Sci-Fi and Horror Collection. You ask, where do I go to get these fantastic collections? <laughs> well, you go to oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. And while you're there, sign up for Nostalgia USA Digital Magazine with over 15 hours of audio and video on every issue, all free. Where you ask? Well, oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. Visit today. Order today. oldtimeradiodvd.com. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Here's I, sweetheart. Sam! Oh, I was ready to death. This office, glass all over the floor, holes in the wall. That was just business going on as usual during all vacations, Eff. Well, what was it all about, Sam? They tried, Effie, just tried to pluck my feathers and cook my goose. I'm done sitting, too. How could they? Oh, they were a mean lot. Are you all right? Hale and hearty. Every giblet in place and not a feather ruffled. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Oh, it was heavenly. Mama had a turkey dinner, sage dressing, cranberry sauce, candy jams. Hard cider? <laughs> a little. Calm, clean, Effie. Well, I, I, I had two glasses. Ah. Everyone was there. Cousin Gertie, Dwight, Mrs. Floss. I was disappointed when you didn't show up, Sam. Did you have Thanksgiving dinner? Sure. Sam? At the Helping Hand Rescue Mission, where there's plenty of free parking and never a cover charge. For further details, consult the report, which I will presently be down to dictate on a pasty chronicle of foul play. The Terrified Turkey Caper. For NBC, William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, brings you the greatest private detective of them all in The Adventures of Sam Spade. Sam! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you were waiting for me. Having Thanksgiving dinner at a, at a rescue mission, and Mama cooked a perfectly wonderful... Thank your mother for me, and tell her I'll be over to break wishbones with her tonight. And to atone for my social indifferences, here's a little something I brought for you. Oh, Sam! Oh. You shouldn't have. It's beautiful. What is it? A blunder bus. A blunder what? Bus. As in step to the rear of. Oh. Well, what does it do? Shoot, Seth. It's a gun. Our founding fathers used it in foraging for feathered food when they settled this abundant continent. And it's mine. To do with what you will. Oh, where is it going? Pencil boy? Yes, Sam. Uh, who gave it to you? Pad open? Oh, yes, but I don't Knees know. Knees crossed? Uh, did you mean the founding fathers? Don't peek. Date, November 24th, 1952. Detective Lieutenant I.C. Kelsey, Homicide Detail, San Francisco Police. From Samuel State, license number 137596. Subject, Turkey. Dear Kelsey... This was a big week for the cranberry pickers, the butchers, the sage makers, and the stomach pill people. But for private detectives, it was strictly from hunger. My office door opened only twice a day. Once to let me in and once to let me out. And when on Wednesday I heard a knock on the door, I went into a paroxysm of delight. Come in! Come in! Come in! Andre Vu! Andre is dead! Erin! When I ran out of languages, I got up from behind the desk, walked to the door, and opened it. Standing there was a small, middle-aged man with a pink, bald head. His blue serge suit needed pressing, and he was nervously fingering a strawberry birthmark under his left ear. Uh, Mr. Samuel Spade? I am. May, may I? May I have a moment? You me? may have several, but not in the corridor. It's not in my lease. Oh, I'll come in. Good, good, good. Well... Uh, you'll have to excuse me, Mr. Spade. I, I've had so few dealings with private detectives. I, I find it hard to begin. Well, I... Oh, perhaps I shouldn't have come at all. Goodbye. No, 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 wait a minute. Maybe I can help you. What? Well, you see, I... I... Oh, what's the use? You won't believe me. Nobody does. I'd really better... Oh, now, wait. Wait. I'll believe you. All I ask is a chance. Now, now let's start with your name. Oh, what, my name? Yes. Yes. Yes, my name. 
To begin with, you won't believe that. Oh, oh, but I can verify it. Yes, I can. It's on this registration book of the old Colony Hotel in the 1943 phone book and on my old driver's license. Well, I'll have to know it before I can verify it. Oh, yes, yes, of course you will. It's, uh, it's Tom. Well, now that's not so hard to believe. Oh, you haven't heard the rest of it. It's Tom. A turkey. <clears throat> You, you see, I told you you wouldn't believe it. I'd better go. No, no. Uh, let me be the first to believe you. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, Tom, uh, what's your problem? Oh, dear. Dear, that's even harder to explain. Well, now that I don't believe. But uh, take a breath and jump into it. Yes, yes. yes. My name is Tom Turkey, and they're going to kill me for Thanksgiving. Well, I had asked for it, and I had gotten it. And I sat back wondering who had gone to all the trouble to play this funny joke on me. I was looking at my hand to see if there was any itching powder on it where he'd shaken it when my phone rang. I lifted the receiver, swung around in my swivel, and gazed out onto the street. It was Al Cuchel calling, a private eye whose reputation was shadier than a mushroom cellar. Hiya, Spady. Al. Haven't seen much of you lately, Spady. Now have to get together. Yeah, well, so long. Wait, wait, I'll tell you why I called. I've had a pest in my office, keeps coming back. Thinks he's a turkey, somebody wants to dress. I brushed him, but your name came up, and I just wanted to warn you. He might be in to see you. I'm confused, Al. I never knew you to turn your back on a buck. Oh, I don't want any of this one. His buttons are loose. My advice to you is to bounce him. Well, we've never traded advice before, Coochoo. Why now? Well, after all, we're in the same racket. If we can't help each other... Oh, sure, Al, sure. I appreciate it. Give me a ring. We've got to get together sometime. Yeah, when I get a free night, we'll Jimmy parking meter. Yeah, we... Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> parking meter. Uh, see you later, Spady. I turned back to the desk, and what I saw in front of me was an empty chair. Tom Turkey had taken wings. I got up and walked to the window, and a minute later, I saw him come out of the building downstairs and start to cross the street. And then I saw something else. A large four-ton truck was tearing down the street, picking up speed. Instinctively, I shouted a warning, and at the last second, Tom Turkey scrambled from in front of the truck and disappeared into the alleyway. The truck roared up the street, and on its side was printed in gold letters, Haynes, you drive it. There was nothing to say it wasn't coincidence, this near miss mishap, but somehow I found myself intrigued and wanting to hear more of the little guy's story. He said the old Colony Hotel. On the way, I stopped at the library, found an old 1943 phone book, and looked. He was listed. Thomas Turkey, it said. Out of curiosity, I rang the number. Hello? I wonder if you can help me. I'm inquiring about a Mr. Turkey. Turkey? This ain't his number no more. I know. I haven't had any calls for him for years. Call him out. Yeah, I know, I know. I knew a woman named Robert once. Mrs. Robert. About Turkey. Could you remember what he looked like? I don't. Hey, Manny, what Turkey looked like? Huh? Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, yeah. Small man, round 50. Nice fellow, man, he says. Strawberry under his left ear? Strawberry under his left ear, Manny. Uh-huh. Yeah, strawberry under his left ear. Well, thank you, madam, for your information, and thanks to Manny. Well, you're welcome, but I don't know what you're going to do with it. Old man Turkey's dead. Been dead for years. <laughs> Curiouser and curiouser, I thought. They had described the man who came to my office 20 minutes ago. And now he'd been dead for years. I continued on to the old Colony Hotel. Room, 75 cents, it said. Tom's room is 114. Who is it? Sam Spade. Oh, come in, Mr. Spade. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry I ran away. I didn't think you really believed me. Well, I'm not sure I do yet. Tell me, was that truck an accident? Oh, I don't think so, no. They... They made three attempts before to kill me. Somebody tried to push me in front of a train, and then a wheelchair full of cement dropped off a building and just missed me, and then I was shot at. Oh, who were they, and why would they want to kill you? I don't know. I just don't know. Look, let's pack. Pack? Pack. I dialed your old phone number, and the people who answered said you're dead. Oh, a lot of people think I'm dead. Yeah. Look, do you still want me to work for you? Oh, yes, yes, please. Well, you'll have to tell me more, then. I yes, can't... I... I guess I'd better tell you everything. Oh, it's, it's hard to talk about, Mr. Spade. It's not easy to admit to someone you've been a foolish man. You see, I just turned 50. I was quite tired of the life I'd led. Proper, dull, and unfruitful, except in money. My business was wearing, and 
so was my wife, Henriette. This has a traditional ring. Anyway, to make it short, I decided to run away. One day I drove to work, I parked my car in the middle of the Bay Bridge where the suicide note left it and disappeared. Where did you go? Oh, all over the world. I took a job on a boat. I did. On a boat. And then I settled in San Paulo, Brazil, under another name. Now you're back. Why? Well, maybe I got lonely. Maybe I got wiser. Maybe maybe I felt I paid enough for my mistakes. Let's just say I'm back. I want to be with Henrietta. Have you seen her? I checked into this hotel and wrote her a letter saying I wasn't dead. I was back in San Francisco and I... I wanted to come back to her if she still would have me. But I told her I wouldn't bother her unless she wanted to see me. That she could contact me here. That was a week ago. And you haven't heard from her? No, no. And almost right away, these attempts on my life began. I see. All right, what's her address? 3118 Monroe. Oh, she's taken her maiden name again. Black Henrietta Black. Come on, let's go. No, no, I'm not going to see her until she asks me. Look, you're going to my apartment. Nobody will bother you there. And you're going to see Henriette? That's right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spade. You you do believe me. I think I'm really ready to face the world again now. I deposited Tom in my apartment with instructions to open the door for no one but me. And then I proceeded to 3118 Monroe in a high-rent district. I was ushered through a comely portico by a Japanese maid who told me to wait in a study heavy with mahogany. In a moment, two people came in. The woman wore a black dress, silver pendant, flat shoes, and a complexion the color of apple meat. She was Miss Henrietta Black and or Mrs. Tom Turkey. The man turned out to be Leander Luce, the lady's attorney, business manager, and canasta partner. You say you have something important to discuss with me, Mr. Spade? I do. I hope you don't mind my asking Mr. Luce to be here. Not at all. Well, Mrs. Turkey, I just talked to your husband, Tom. Mr. Spade, if you please. I say something? A rather feeble attempt at comedy, Mr. Spade. Well, I wasn't trying for a laugh. You are Mrs. Turkey, aren't you? I was. You undoubtedly still are. I've expected to hear another one of these cruel jokes about my name. At Thanksgiving time, Mr. Spade, someone was always going to stuff Tom, baste him, dress him, slice him. This season, they're going to kill him. They are not going to kill him. He is already dead. He's not dead, Mrs. Turkey. And you should not. I should. Yes, he sent you a letter saying he was back in San Francisco and wanted to see you. Mr. Spade, this has gone absolutely far enough. Not quite. What about the letter? I know of no such letter. I see. Well, thank you for your time. I'm sorry I bothered you. You used bad judgment in coming in the first place. Yes, maybe you're right. There was falsehood in this someplace, Lieutenant, and it stuck out like a fat girl in slack. The only thing to do was to go back to my apartment, get Tom Turkey, and confront Mrs. T with her husband in the flesh. But when I got back to my apartment building, I spotted in rapid succession, one, an ambulance, two, a police car, and upstairs, outside my half-open apartment door, I spotted three, you. I've been expecting you. What's going on, Kelsey? Yeah, serious, Sam, serious. Who's that bald-headed man moving around the apartment? That's McCracken, the new medical examiner, checking a stiff on your rug. <laughs> I stepped around you, Lieutenant, and pushed the door all the way open. I saw McCracken kneeling over the body and a couple of men from Homicide taking photos. I moved into the room feeling nothing good. A little guy had given me a job, and while I was jacking with his wife, somebody got to him. And in my apartment, where I'd stashed him, McCracken stood up and I looked down at the body. Then I looked again. Who I saw wasn't Tom Turkey at all. It was the late private eye, Al Kuchel. are listening to the weekly adventure of radio's most famous detective, Sam Spade. You Friday fans of Sam Spade, there's mystery on Saturday evening, too, on NBC. Tomorrow, the man called X sets out on another mission of danger and intrigue in some far-off corner of the earth. Herbert Marshall stars as the man called X, a man without a name who travels the world over, protecting his country's interests. He lives by his wits, and his business is danger. He is the man called X, tomorrow over most NBC stations. For Top Sunday Listening, it's another broadcast of The Big Show on NBC. This Sunday, your stars include Fred Allen, Jack Carson, Mindy Carson, Ed Archie Gardner, Ed Wynn, and many, many more. And Tallulah is your MC as usual. This Sunday, it's the big show on NBC. And 
now back to the terrified turkey caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. While the men from Homicide were taking pictures, etc., you and I, Lieutenant, were going round and round on the question, if I didn't kill the man found in my room, who did? And you were sufficiently impressed with my insult, Chelsea, not to hold me for the murder. We bowed to each other and I left. Thinking back to the truck that had almost run Turkey down, I went to the Haynes U Drive truck rental garage. Yes? What is it? Hey, what do you want? I'm a detective. Could you give me a list of names for everybody who rented a truck from you during the past few days? Sure. He handed me a big registration book, and I read every name for the past week. For the first five days, they all seemed to be nice, normal, abnormal names. And then, under the rentals for the day before, was the name of John Smith. John had given his address as 7200 Churney. And I happen to know that Churney only goes up to 2000. The dispatcher said that Smith had returned the truck about three hours before. And he remembered him as an ugly, heavy-set, and rough-voiced character who looked like an ex-longshoreman. They had already washed the truck, so the fingerprints were all out of Mr. Spade again. Look, I'd like to speak with Mrs. Turk, uh, Miss Black, if you don't mind. Come in. Come in. Thank you. This way, into the den. Right. Well, I was sure you'd look into this affair a little more and realize that it was just a blind alley. A hoax of some kind. Where's Miss Black? Oh, she's upstairs lying down. The whole affair has upset her, and uh, she asked not to be disturbed. I think the wisest course of action for you, Mr. Spade, is just to let the matter drop. You can't let a murder just drop, Mr. Lewis. The police wouldn't hear of it. Huh? Murder? Who? An unfrocked private detective named Al Kuchel. Well, what does this have to do with Henrietta Black? Al Kuchel called me earlier today and said that Tom Turkey was a crackpot, a little man with delusions. He tried to top me off taking his case. He sounds like a perceiving man. Well, he didn't perceive ending up in my apartment with a bullet in his head. Well, that's too bad, but I still don't I left see... Tom Turkey in my apartment for safekeeping, and when I returned, he was gone and Kuchel was dead. Well, that explains itself, obviously. This detective knew that Tom Turkey was a phony, and Turkey killed him. It can figure that way, and a number of other ways. Mr. Fade, I have no desire to sit here trading subtleties with you. As yet, no one has demonstrated that the real Tom Turkey actually exists alive. Now, until you do have something more concrete and less mythological, Miss Black requests that you do not come around opening up old wounds. You've made an eloquent point. Just tell me one thing. If I can. When did Tom Turkey disappear? I mean, what month, what day? It was, uh... Oh, yes, uh, 1943, uh, November. But I'm not sure of the exact day. I think it was in the third week. Could it have been on Thanksgiving? Very possibly. Very possibly. I returned thoughtfully to my office and did a little rapid mental arithmetic and came up with a number seven. From November 23rd, 1943 to November 23rd, 1950 was seven years to the day. And I pondered this. What did the number seven mean to the life or death of Tom Turkey? I had just hit upon the answer and was crying Eureka when my office door opened, unknocked, and a visitor came in unannounced. He was ugly, heavy set, and looked like an ex longshoreman. I waited to see if the voice checked. You spade? Who shall I say is calling? Yeah, Captain John Smith. And here's my calling card. The first one. The first bullet grazed my shoulder and tore the padding out of my coat. The second bullet hit the water cooler and it crashed over water and all on top of me. Where the third bullet hit, I wasn't sure at the time because darkness came mushing through my head like a freight. When I opened my eyes again, I expected to see St. Peter checking my ID card. But all I saw were the dust balls under my desk and a fly bathing himself in a pool of water spreading slowly over the floor. There was blood on my hand, but it came from a glass cut. I was in shambles, but alive. Captain John Smith had shoved off, obviously thinking his bullets had done their work. Homicide, Lieutenant Kelsey. Sam Kelsey, have you found anything more about Tom Turkey? Nothing, Sam. Frankly, I'm beginning to wonder if there is such a guy. Well, clever, Kelsey. A few minutes ago, a gorilla by the name, believe it or not, of Captain John Smith just tried to kill me in my office. Oh, 
go on, Sam. I find it hard to think. You there's... find it hard to think, period. Really, Sam? Did you get him? No, but my office is a wreck, and there's a hole blasted in my wall big enough to put a basketball in. Well, what did he use, a bazooka? I figured dum-dum bullets. Dum-dum? Well, that's illegal, ain't it? Kelsey, doesn't it strike you as significant that every attempt on Turkey's life has been vicious, as if someone not only wanted to kill him, but also mutilate him? Yeah, yeah, now that you mention it. Somebody probably wanted to make identification difficult. Even then, they didn't want anybody to know who he was. Now, listen carefully, Kelsey. This yeah. is real deep. Tom Turkey disappeared on Thanksgiving of 1943. A person has to be missing seven years before he can be legally dead and his insurance collected. Now, if someone had Turkey insured, they could collect the day after this Thanksgiving, if Turkey didn't show up before. You mean somebody's trying to kill him for the insurance? I would say so, Kelsey. I would say so. Now, hurry up and find him. When I put down the phone, I heard a heavy pounding. For a minute, I thought it was in my head, until I turned to face the door, and standing there was a small pilgrim with bandy legs in black stockings, pantaloons, white collared coat, and stove pipe hat. Hallelujah! He wore silver buckles, and what he was pounding on the floor was an 18th century blunderbuss. Hallelujah! Have I got the right place? Oh, offhand, I'd say so. If you're looking for Captain John Smith, he just left. Pocahontas is expected any minute. <laughs> now, don't you go trying to confuse me. I'm too thirsty. What's on your mind? Pilgrim? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a fellow named Dan... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm so thirsty, I forgot. Sam Spade? Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, oh, you broke your water bottle, huh? Yeah. Good, good. That stuff's poison anyway. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hey, say, uh... Do you happen to have any hard cider around? Fresh out. Oh. <laughs> I'm kind of thirsty, you know. Any type of corn squeezing? Here. Try this, Dad. Well, well, yeah. Good, huh? Uh -huh. You like that, huh? Oh. <laughs> hey, follow me. Uh, but before we go... Do you suppose we could have a little something for the road? It's bitter cold. I gave him a little, but not too much, because I didn't want him to lose his way. He walked me right down Market Street so he could look in the liquor store windows. He said it gave him a comfortable feeling to know there was so much good in the world. And then we turned right a few blocks until we came to the Helping Hand Mission. Across its gray front, a banner promised special holiday food and comfort to the unfortunate. And on the street in front of it, there was a brass band sending out signals to the fraternity that any minute the great feast of Thanksgiving would begin. The band members and other volunteer workers were all dressed as children with quaint conceit. My pilgrim led me to a dark corner of the club room, and sitting there unhappily was none other than Tom Turkey. Hello, Mr. Spade. Oh, hello, Tom. What happened to my apartment? Why did you run away? Well, I was afraid. You told me not to answer the door until you came back. Well, somebody knocked on the door and said it was you, so I opened it, and two men came in. Tell me, was one of the male Kuchel? Yes, the detective. Yes. The other man was a big, ugly-looking fellow, and when they saw I was alone, they started arguing. About what? Well, the detective said that now that he brought the ugly man there, he wanted his money. Yeah. The ugly man pulled a gun, and they started to fight. Oh, dear, I, I slipped out the door, and when I was halfway downstairs, I heard a shot and kept on running. Well, Al Kuchel is dead. Oh, my... I thought so. This was the only place I could think of to hide. Oh, when Henrietta finds out I've been mixed up in a murder, she'll never take me back. Henrietta. Hey, tell me, did your wife ever have any insurance on you? Oh, before I ran away, she did. A $50,000 policy, but, oh, that would have lapsed by now. Maybe, maybe. Did it have a suicide clause in it? A suicide? Yes. Uh, well, no. No, it didn't. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, you'd like to talk to Henrietta, wouldn't you? All right, here's your phone number. Call her up and tell her where you are. Oh, dear, I, I don't think I could. I'm too frightened. You've got to do something to help yourself. If you don't, by midnight, you might be a cold turkey. Oh. I'm sorry, just slipped out. All right, I'll do it. Well, he went and made the call. When he returned, he said that a man had answered who said Henrietta would come down and pick Tom up. He didn't want to wait, but I sat on him. The pilgrim brought us a dish of turkey dinner, saying he couldn't stand food himself, and we munched a spell. In a little while, a limousine pulled up in front of a mission with someone in back whom I couldn't see. A chauffeur stepped out and came in inquiring for Tom Turkey. It was Captain John Smith himself, 
When he saw me, a look of shocked surprise came over his unhandsome face. Hoping to catch him off balance, I drove at him. It was the liveliest thing that has happened at the Helping Hand Mission in years, and we had a good house, too. Money was even changing hands. When I heard the odds starting to go against me, I realized I'd better come up with something. Peter, use it, partner. And I did. The bandy leg pilgrim shoved his blunderbuss right in my hand. And I swung. Smith <laughs> dropped like pheasant on the wing. I looked up. The passenger from the limousine was just coming in. Yeah, what's the meaning of this? It means, Leander Luce. That you're not going to carve Tom Turkey up for your Thanksgiving insurance policy. Hallelujah! <laughs> Period, end of report. Sam, I don't understand. Well, it's as plain as the cranberry stain on your dress, huh? Hmm? Luce, as Henrietta's business manager, had her power of attorney. And secretly, he kept making the payments on Tom Turkey's insurance policy. Oh, and then he'd collect for Henrietta and keep the money himself. Effie, sometimes your lightning mind frightens me. Now, go type that up. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's fun and laughs with the chimes later tonight when Ed Gardner stars in Duffy's Tavern. As usual, Duffy won't be there... But Archie, the manager, will definitely be on hand to serve his blue plate special of grilled English language. This Sunday, the big show comes your way again. Tallulah will be your hostess, and the stars include Fred Allen, Jack Carson, Edwin, Meredith Wilson, and many, many more. It's the big show, Sunday, on NBC. and tried to tell you. Was his name really Captain John Smith? Now, Effie, could we have a Thanksgiving caper without a Captain John Smith? It wouldn't be right. It was a coincidence, wasn't it? Well, if you promise not to tell anyone. Oh. His real name was Michael Giuseppe Yablonski Smith. I called him John for short. You're so kind. Mm-hmm. Are we going over to your mother's for cold turkey snacks? Well, all right, but I don't think there'll be much left. Oh? You see, my cousin Judy couldn't find a little boy. And Mother phoned and said they just found him. Mm-hmm. He was inside the turkey, eating his way out. Effie, is there no way to curb that tongue of yours? <laughs> There's one way. Well, come here. Oh. Oh. Good night, Sam. Good night, sweetheart. Adventures of Sam Spade are produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade was played by Stephen Dunn. Lorreen Tuttle is Effie. Script for tonight's adventure by Larry Roman and John Michael Hayes. Musical scoring by Lud Gluskin, conducted by Robert Armbrister. again next week, same time, for another adventure with Sam Spade. Here the magnificent Montague, then visit Duffy's Tavern on NBC. NBC.